Hello, Yu-Gi-Oh! players, and welcome to another episode of Rethinking Thunder. I'm your host, the RJB Zero. So today is Legacy of the Valiant sneak preview across the country, and with it comes some of the best Thunder family support that we've gotten since, arguably, since the deck came out, but that all depends on whether or not you think that Paladynamo is better than Arknight or not. But that's debatable, and I'll talk about that in a second. Anyway... Um, so this actually might be the set that brings Thunder Family back into the spotlight. I know that they've successfully topped, uh, at least two regionals so far, um, and they also got that ARG Montreal circuit, uh, win a little while back, but in all reality, they've been kind of one of those little rogue anti-meta decks that's just been hanging around, um, in the sidelines, but with the new support, I actually legitimately think that, um that Thunder Family might come back into the spotlight, and that all depends, of course, on the players. Um, since Thunder Family has a more sustainable engine than most decks that can crank out rank 4s, um, I think that we have an advantage in playing those Arc Knights and Ex Exiton Knights um, to their fullest advantage. Uh, so... Without further ado, why don't I do some little reviewing? Um, so first off... Talking about Ark Knight, I believe they call it Sila Honors Ark now, just so that it says Shark. Anyway, uh, so Ark Knight is now in the game, and really, but the big question is whether or not this is going to be more useful than Paladinamo. I personally don't think so. The reason is because Legacy of the Valiant is coming out, which means that Bujins are going to be a thing. Um, and if Bujins are going to be a thing... Uh, then Thunder Family is going to have to be able to take out things that were just kind of sitting there normal summoned, which Arc Knight cannot do. Dark Knight can do it, I believe. Possibly. I don't remember. Anyway, but Dark or, or Arc Knight uh, cannot take monsters that were uh, normal summoned. So I still think Paladynamo is better for this format, uh, since the vast majority of the time you're going to be playing against Fire Fist, Bujins, uh, Constellar it works against, but you have to actually put something on the board first, and that's kind of difficult. Uh, Thunder Family has some major issues with, um, what's his futz? Pleiades. Anyway, so the, uh, crud. Arc Knight is going to be a big piece of support for Thunder Family, uh, I think more so in the future, so we may have to wait for that to be a major turning point for the Thunder Family deck, but really Exiton Knight is the big deal. Uh, because for the first time in a long time, being, having an, a Ma Hunter and a Pa Hunter without... Thunder Seahorse or Recycling Batteries isn't going to lose you the game. Um, because you can go into that Exiton Knight, and if your opponent set up their field, you've already lost a little bit of advantage because you're going to an Xyz monster, so it's more likely that you're going to have fewer cards uh, than your opponent, and you can just blast the board um, and be done with it. So Exiton Knight is extremely good for Thunder Family decks, especially for improving our decks consistency. The other thing about Legacy of the Valiant is that, once again, Bujins are coming out now, and I think that Thunder Family has a lot to say against Bujins. First of all, we can run, you know, D. Fissure, Macrocosmos, Soul Drain, um, pretty much everything that stops your opponent from making those, uh, graveyard plays. Uh, you can run, uh, what's it called? Ah, uh, nuts, 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 just a second, I got this. Um, Imperial Iron Wall, that card. Uh, to prevent your opponent from banishing cards. Uh, and you can also, and this is the big deal, you can play DNA Surgery. In fact, you can main deck it, and I'll tell you why. Even if it's just the single teched um, DNA Surgery, uh, the deck actually has a use for it. And let me tell you what that is. It's actually something I've talked about a couple of times, and that's going DNA Surgery, call Dinosaur, put a Logia on the board. Like, what are Bujins going to do against that? Uh, I suppose they could attempt to Mirror Force the Logia, but you still got the um, the DNA Surgery sitting there, so they actually have to use up two cards to take out that one DNA Surgery. Uh, and that's a really big deal. If you've got that Logia sitting there uh, with the DNA Surgery, then you can... Um, then your opponent can't successfully MST that DNA Surgery. It's just a, a lot of... Um, lockdown power comes from being able, put, being able to put just one DNA surgery into your deck, and it works against multiple decks. If you draw into that DNA surgery, it isn't necessarily going to be dead, because against any deck, either Logia or Dolka, 
will give you an advantage. And even against Bujins, you have that option because Dolka also has uh, the advantage of being able to take out Cranes during the damage step and negate your opponent's Quelins and stuff like that. Um, so Dolka is a really powerful card, and really the difference between whether or not you go for Logia or Dolka depends on how much back row your opponent has. If you are confident that your opponent doesn't have, like, a Mirror Force or something, and you have, um, you know, and you have that, uh, the DNA surgery, then you can go into Logia. The reason why you'd want to go into Dolka if your opponent has more, more back row is because Thunder Family these days is running Trap Stun, and if you have to hit the Trap Stun button, you don't want to Lance your monster, of course, because it'll die against the Bujin, against the Bujin monster, um, but if you have the trap stun against the Mirror Force, then you can use your Dolka to take out their crane, and you still have the DNA surgery. So, um, so being able to use that DNA surgery is really, really good for Thunder Family. So I think that Thunder Family has the chance to come into the spotlight now. Um, and the fact that DNA surgery can be used for the deck against basically any deck of the format, um, because most decks this format have to have one type or the other. I'm not saying all of them do, but to a degree it's really important to a lot of these decks, um, and you can actually use it against them, and of course there's the advantage of putting Loggy or Doka on the board. So that's, uh, what we are thinking about when rethinking Thunder this week. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And then, of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Meanwhile, thank you guys for watching Yu-Gi-Oh! on Business Casual. I'm your host, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.